you collapse all of the connections simultaneously at the rate that it did without secondary explosions. We might anticipate that an unevenly damaged building would fall over. Yet, videos of the collapse of Building 7 show a fairly symmetrical fall. How do we make sense of this? If the buildings had come down by fire, we would have seen a more natural progression of collapse. And clearly, a more asymmetrical pattern uh, should have been present. The symmetry is the smoking gun. It cannot happen that when you have asymmetric damage, you will get a perfectly symmetrical collapse. The exterior columns on the outside, on the outside as well as on the inside, at the bottom would have to be severed almost at the same time. I worked for Control Demolition Incorporated, CDI, the top rated explosive demolition firm in the world. What I saw, it was a classic implosion. The center of the core, the penthouse area, starts to move first, and then the building uh, follows along with it. That's another indicator that this NIST report is very suspect. When it's all finished, the outside walls are piled one on top of the other right in the middle of the building. Just like a house of cards if it were coming down. According to NIST, the failure occurred at column 79 on level 12. This means basically as they're talking about a single columnar collapse or failure that resulted in a total collapse of the building. That just does not make any sense. The explanations from FEMA and from NIST don't add up, but there is enormous circumstantial evidence, circumstantial and actually physical evidence as well, that would lead us to a different conclusion. And the conclusion is controlled demolition. This is controlled demolition. Zeker weten, zeker weten. Er is nagesprongen. Dit is een opdracht gebeurd. Dit heeft een team gedaan van experts. Building 7 to me is, is really what gives it away because that's a classic case of controlled demolition. This is the original site of the World Trade Center Twin Towers. Construction is now underway where dramatic new facilities are being erected. Just 10 years ago, the planes hit the towers, cutting through some exterior and interior supporting structural steel columns. The fuel from the planes ignited office fires across several floors. According to the official reports, the structural steel frame was weakened and failed causing a total progressive collapse of each tower. Does the official explanation make sense? Was there a comprehensive investigation that examined all of the evidence? I walked into the office uh, and the first uh, words that I heard was a plane's just run into the World Trade Center. And my initial thought was, well, that's okay. It's built to withstand uh, a 707. It did not seem possible that these, these towers that were designed to withstand the impact of a 707 could possibly collapse in such a short order of time from the time that they were hit. The majority of the jet fuel was burnt up instantly in the big fireball, and it was gone. The fires that were left were office furnishings and carpet and things like that. A lot of things in these kind of buildings have to be fire resistant by nature. It's required by code. So there really isn't a whole lot of fuel in there to begin with. The media portrayed the, these fires as being extremely hot. 
but uh, the fires were not that hot in, in World Trade Center 1 and 2. If you look at the NIST zone data, you could see this. And, uh, and to, to use our own powers of observation, you could tell by, by seeing these fires uh, and seeing black smoke come out the windows, that means that the, the fires were oxygen starved and it was incomplete uh, combustion. And so it was a low temperature fire. The heat from the fire supposedly softened the steel and thereby brought the buildings down. If you have a flame at 750 degrees, you can hold that flame under a steel beam forever and you'll never reach a high enough temperature to bend steel, let alone melt it. So immediately I knew at that point that the official explanation was dead wrong. Rather than a slow groaning collapse that we might anticipate, the Twin Towers show in the videos a very rapid, sudden onset of destruction. What does this imply? This claimed that the upper section of each of the towers crushed the lower section. However, when you watch video closely, in the case of World Trade Center 1, you'll see that the upper section disintegrates itself. It appears to be a controlled demolition of its own, of the upper section. The top section pushing on the bottom section, it's going to meet equal forces as it goes. Both sections are going to be uh, demolished at the same rate. So by the time you've crushed up 15 stories below it, the top 15 stories are also going to be crushed. And so there's nothing left now to crush the rest of the building. You're looking for a jolt. That this thing, if it actually comes down and hits, you should be able to see the point at which they actually impact. Because it would actually slow down the motion of the falling block. Before the tower started collapsing from the top, the antenna started to fall. And the antenna, uh, of course, was over the middle of the elevator shafts. I'm very familiar with the interior structure uh, that surrounded the elevator shafts and uh, the accessibility which the elevator companies had 24-7. It wouldn't be a problem once you gained access to the uh, elevator shafts. Then a team of loading experts would have access to all the core columns and beams. The rest could be accomplished at that point by just the right kind of explosives for the job at hand. The only way that I can see that the towers could have collapsed is that the interior columns were compromised. Over a hundred first responders reported sounds of explosions and flashes of light at the onset of destruction of both towers. These were not discussed in the NIST report. What did these eyewitnesses actually see and hear? As we were getting our gear on and making our way to the stairway, there was a uh, heavy duty explosion. Inside the lobby. We stuck on the stairs for a while. We finally got down to the lobby. Then we get to the lobby, it was this big explosion. There were numerous secondary explosions taking place in that building. It was con there were continuous explosions. Floor by floor, it started popping out. It was like, it was if, if they had detonated. Dead, yeah, as detonated. If they were planned yeah. to take down a building. Boom, 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 boom. And it just started going pop. It just started going boom, 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 boom. And he goes, how fast? They go like firecrackers. They're reporting exactly what I would expect. You're hearing boom, 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 waves of, 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 of explosions going off, not one massive big boom. There's so many videos of witnesses from that day that report explosions. There's radio transmissions from the FDNY. We have the transcripts that were recorded you know, back in 2001 of all these firefighters and first responders reporting explosions. This testimony should have caused the presumption that there was a good chance explosive residue would be found and justified testing for it rather than the opposite. It doesn't look like a collapse. It's like a huge mushrooming 
billowing uh, kind of an event. Uh, that whole thing looks nothing like a building falling down. It's a building being blown up. That's what the physics shows. Yet they refuse to consider the possibility that explosives or some other form of demolition device could have been used to cause the collapses of the towers. And the fact that controlled demolition is consistent with all the available technical evidence. And the response to that request for correction is this simply saying they're unable to provide a full explanation for the total collapse, even though that was their task given to them by Congress. FEMA documents a 1,200-foot diameter debris field around each tower. Videos show multi-ton steel sections of hundreds of individual steel pieces ejecting out of the towers at 60 miles an hour for a distance of 600 feet. They also show clouds of debris pulverized in mid-air and isolated explosive ejections as many as 60 stories below the so-called crush zone. Videos also show the near total destruction of both towers. What does all this tell us about the forces and energies involved in the destruction? Large, multi-ton beams were hurled hundreds of yards laterally. Gravity works vertically, not laterally. So something's happening to throw these things horizontally at those kinds of speeds. And here it is trailing white smoke the whole time. It, it really is indicative of uh, some kind of explosion. The individual explosions that I noticed 20 and 30 and 40 stories below the collapsing structure. And uh, naysayers tend to say, well, that's just air being blown out the windows. I mean, it doesn't really work to say it's just air pressure. And I estimated these are coming out faster than 100 miles an hour. As an architect, I would expect to see um, larger portions of the building floors, uh, the decking, the steel decking, the concrete topping, much larger remnants of what the structural components of this building was. What happened to the concrete? The concrete was pulverized, and I was down here Tuesday, and it was like you were on a foreign planet. All of lower Manhattan, not just this site, from river to river, there was dust powder, two, three inches thick. The concrete was just uh, pulverized. In its report on World Trade Center 7, which came out in May of 2002, FEMA documents in Appendix C steel that has been melted and even partially evaporated, resembling Swiss cheese. What are we to make of this? I'd like to know why NIST excluded the evidence of melting steel. Well, why is this not included? Why is this forensic evidence not being included in the report? First of all, let's go back to your basic uh, premise that there was uh, a pool of molten, molten steel. Um, I know of absolutely nobody, and no eyewitness who said so, nobody who's produced it. You'd get down below and you'd see molten steel, like molten bit. steel running down the channel rails, like you're in a foundry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like lava. Like, like, it was like lava. lava. From a there actually melted beams where it was molten steel that was being dug out. Underground, it was still so hot that molten metal dripped down the sides of a wall. It's this fused element of, of steel, mo molten steel and concrete and all of these things all fused by the heat into one single element. And they pulled out the big block of concrete and there was a, like a little river of steel uh, flowing. 